What's going on YouTube? Steven the Salon Guy here and are you tired of your hair turning orange when you're trying to color it yourself or are you trying to figure out why your hair turns orange when you color it yourself? Well, I'm going to explain that in this video. So I've been a hairstylist for 27 years and I've basically seen it all. There's even a point in my career where I was working in the consumer division department for a major hair color company, which meant I would actually take the phone calls uh, from people, consumers who would actually try to color their hair at home and have hair color nightmares. I'd be trying to walk them through it on the phone saying, well, uh, but basically, you know, I've seen it all in my, my, my uh, career. So <clears throat> let's start with uh, some visuals here first. You're this color, naturally, right? You're this hair color. You wanna be this hair color. <laughs> You wanna go from this to this. You go into a store, uh, and a drugstore, wherever it is, you see this color, blonde, and you go, I want that color. And you go, you put it right on your roots, you put it on your whole head, and your roots turn orange, and the ends turn orange. It's an absolute nightmare. Well, there's a number of reasons why that happens, okay? Now, traditionally, I, I'm not really, <laughs> One, for sharing advice with uh, consumers, you know, in regards to professional hair coloring, simply because as professionals, you know, this is what we do. And we're always the ones who fix the at-home jobs that become an absolute nightmare, which is great for us because they end up being big jobs and, and pretty costly. But at the same time, it could be prevented if, you know, a few things were if you guys understood a few more things as consumers. So first of all, in every human being, there's something called the underlying pigment, all right? The underlying pigment is the natural warmth that every human being has in their hair. So starting from the darkest hair color naturally, meaning being black or darkest brown, going all the way to pale blonde, each one of those has a very, a different level of warmth naturally. Everyone has it ranging from red to red-orange, to orange, to yellow-orange, to yellow, to pale yellow, okay? Basically, when you're lightening your hair, you're exposing that underlying warmth, that natural pigment. So in this color, in this color right here, let's say the natural pigment for a level six would be, you know, orange, all right? Uh, and what happens is, when you lighten this to go to something like this, which is probably say a level, a level nine or so, level eight or nine, you know, if you're, if you're not using the proper color, it's gonna come out on the warm side, AKA orange or some people say it's red, whatever. By not controlling that warmth, meaning going back to the color wheel, which I'll explain in a second, by not controlling that warmth, you're exposing the natural pigment, making your hair look orange, red, and very, very warm. Colors that you don't want. <clears throat> so how do you prevent this, okay? Now, again, this, com this strictly has to do with hair color itself, the color wheel. The color wheel, basically, what it does, it's, it helps counteract or neutralize colors opposite each other from the color wheel. So, for example, red cancels out, you know, if, if, if you look at the color wheel, I'm trying to, I'm trying to visualize this myself. Okay, violet will cancel out yellow, blue will cancel out orange, green will cancel out red, right? And then you've got red-violet. You need to use something opposite of the color wheel to counteract or neutralize that. For example, if somebody has, you know, a gold or a yellow underlying pigment, you don't want to use something that's ash or blue because blue and yellow makes what? Green. That's how you end up getting green hair. If you take something that's very ash and put it on top of your hair that's already naturally gold. Bad idea. Now, what does cancel out violet is, I'm sorry, gold is violet. So you use something with a violet base, which basically is red and blue, makes violet, okay? So you're using something that's, that's neutralizing that unwanted tone. That's why if your hair is kind of already a nice, you know, uh, somewhat of a, a, a yellow or a pale yellow, and you use a toner or something to kind of tone it, you want something with a violet base, not ash, because that's gonna counteract the neutral, and neutralize unwanted tones. Now, if your hair color is naturally like a dark brown, 
and you want to go maybe two levels later to a you know medium brown, you know the underlying pigment for a medium brown could be you know red orange, right or orange. So in that case, you want to use something that has ash because that's going to give it the most neutral tone, and vice versa. Okay, if you have if you don't want red in your hair, it, meaning if your hair is very very dark and you want to go say one level or so without exposing it, you would need to use something kind of more of a green base. Okay. And, and that's how it all works. So when you're going to the store and you're looking and, and you look like this, right? You're like a, a medium brown or light brown and you look at something like this and you go, I want to be that light. And you put it on and it comes out very warm and brassy. That's the reason why. So how do you counteract it? Again, instead of going for say, you know, dark blonde or, or medium blonde, you go for a medium violet blonde, okay? or for medium ash blonde, depending on, on uh, the results. Now, there may be re results where you're okay with it, you know, not looking this light, but you want to have more of a honey tone, all right? Even so, you're better off trying to neutralize those, the underlying warm tones because the color is already depositing. So when you look at hair color, you've got, you know, and every hair color is different from every brand, but you've got, say, the first number and then dot something. So say, for example, you know, 8.6. The 8 is the level, and the level is the darkness and lightness, okay? And then the number to the right of that is usually the tone. The tone is the characteristic of color, meaning is it auburn, is it copper, is it ash, is it violet, okay? And those are just cosmetic terms for red, green, yellow, blue, all that, okay? And what you need to do is pick out something that is going to neutralize that color. So instead of picking just, say, a medium blonde, you might want to get medium ash blonde. Now, I don't know which, whatever numbers and are reflective of the hair color brand, but that's just a general understanding of it. And that's going to help big time, big time. So in understanding the lightness and darkness of your hair, you know, the hair color is basically only described in two ways, by the lightness and the tone, right? The lightness and darkness, or by tone. And the lightness and darkness is basically, are you, you know, dark brown, medium brown, light brown, blonde, all right? When you think about it, there's black, brown, or blonde, all right? What, what levels and tones are there in between, all right? There's, you know, you could have a, an ash brown, you can have a, an auburn brown, you can have a golden brown, a uh, copper blonde, all those things, all those things are, you know, different characteristics of the tone. And in hair coloring, they're just basically either neutral or they're combined. And that's how you're getting a, a, a light copper brown or just a light brown. So I hope that kind of makes sense to you guys. So what happens is another last thing with the root area, all right? If you have never colored your hair before, there's something that we call hot roots, <laughs> which means that if you just take the color and put it right on your scalp, unfortunately, the heat of the scalp is going to make the color process faster, and it's going to look lighter and brighter than the rest of your hair. So what we do is something called a virgin application, which we apply the color uh, about a half an inch or so, to three quarters of an inch away from the scalp. You don't want to go too far down, but I'd say about a half an inch away from the scalp, all right, about right through here, a half an inch to an inch, say, uh, depending on how long the hair is, and, and you basically color everything from here down. You wait about 10 minutes or so because the color will have started processing, mix up a whole new batch of color, then you go in and apply it to the scalp or the root area and work it down. That is how you prevent getting hot roots or your color looking brighter at the root area. So again, these are all professional terms and, 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 and even if you are a professional watching this, maybe this will even bring some insight to you if you're in school and you're not really too sure, you know, definitely the color wheel is very, very important. It's something you need to pay attention to and understand. And, you know, for you consumers that are watching this, I hope you found some value in this. Uh, you know, I, I don't suggest going out and coloring your hair and doing this. doesn't mean you're going to be a color expert, but I just wanted you guys to kind of understand the difference uh, and, and a better understanding of why your hair may be turning brassy. Again, I don't, I'm not responsible for anything that you guys do to your hair. That's on yourself, <laughs> you know, uh, and every situation is different. 
But I hope you found value to this. And I also have a video on bleaching as well, which some people say, oh, what a waste of time watching a video. But I explained everything there is to explain similar to this video. So let me know if you found this helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time for more videos with a salon guy.